Hey guys, I'm Jim, I edit photos, and today I'm in Luminar AI, and what I'm going into here today is the light tool. It is the first real tool that you get to in editing on the Essentials tab, and it's also, I would argue, pretty much the most powerful tool in Luminar. There's so much you can do with it. You can impact white balance, you can impact the contrast of a photo, you can adjust colors, you can adjust highlights and shadows and whites and blacks, the exposure, you can do a lot of things. And I think people may overlook some of the capabilities here. And what I wanted to do is put this video together to kind of outline what you can do. This is kind of a deep dive on the light tool. However, I want to be uh, clear that I, I'm not going to deep dive into every single aspect of it simply because there's so much. And I could break this into several multiple deep dive videos. But today I'm going to cover it at a very high level and try to deep dive to some extent. So let's get going. I've got a photo here, and the first thing I do is I went ahead and clicked Show a Histogram here on the View tab so that I have the histogram up here because the histogram is very helpful uh, in letting you see kind of the, how the light is distributed across the photo. And a lot of what you're doing in the light tool, as the name implies, is adjusting the light. Now, there's simple stuff here where you might come in and say, oh, it's too dark, I need to brighten it, I need to pull down the highlights, and maybe lift the shadows a little bit, maybe add a little bit of contrast. And absolutely, I mean, you can very quickly have an impact on your photo, but there's more stuff to do, so I, I kind of want to go into that. So I'm going to start at the very top, which is white balance. Actually, you know what? That's not true. I'm actually going to increase the exposure of the photo simply because it's kind of dark, and the stuff that I do next will be easier to see now that I've brightened it. So white balance. White balance is basically how cool or warm and what tint does your photo have and there's basically three different ways to adjust it. There is the drop down menu, which is you can just choose, oh, it's daylight, or it's uh, tungsten, which is gonna be really blue, uh, or maybe flash, or whatever it is. That looks kind of normal. Um, that's one. You can also come in here and adjust it with this little eyedropper. You can just click on that. And as you see, you hover over, and this little graph shows up, and it says pick a target neutral. And usually, what I try to do to get a target neutral uh, uh, is basically. Find something that's kind of gray like that. It's kind of gray, but not, not necessarily perfect. So maybe come over here and maybe there's something more like that that's a little bit more gray. I don't know. What you can see is as you click on different things, the overall temperature and tint in the photo is changing. That actually looks pretty good to me. I tend to like things a little bit cooler versus warmer, unless, of course, it's like a stunning sunset. But anyway, that's two ways to adjust the white balance. And then the third way is just sliding the temperature or tint sliders. So left is cooler, right is warmer. As I said, I kind of like to go a little bit left. Uh, and tint, left is green and right is magenta. And on a photo like this, you don't want to really do too much of that. You want to kind of keep it kind of balanced because... There's not, uh, you know, the green just kind of looks terrible. Like if you go like that, you get this green cast, looks terrible. And if you go too far to the right, you pick up that magenta, which doesn't look good either. So you kind of want to just maybe go where the default is, which is right there at 13. So, so bottom line, three different ways to impact the white balance. It's something I use a lot. On a photo like this, I don't do a lot of white balance. On my blue hour shots, you bet. On my sunsets, you bet. On even my night shots, you bet I mess with white balance. It's just personal preference. Experiment. Make it your friend. Have fun with it. The next thing I want to talk about is right here is profiles. Now, this is only going to show up on a raw file, and this is basically what's called a DCP profile, and it basically helps interpret color based on the raw file uh, type from your camera. So there are different ones built in. There's an Adobe standard, and as I hover over these, you will see how it impacts the, the photo. So there's portrait. There's standard, light, landscape, vivid, those that look very similar. I can hardly even tell the difference, but they both look great in this photo, in my opinion. There's deep, there's neutral, there's clear. You can see what I'm doing here. I'm just hovering, uh, but as I do so, it's impacting how the photo looks because it's interpreting that raw data from the raw file, which in this case is a Sony camera that I shot with. You can also get DCP profiles from other places and load them as well as set a default for the camera. I'm going to go for this landscape one. I think that looks fantastic. I'm loving the photo. And in fact, if you look at the before and after, we've had a uh, pretty good impact. I'm going to drop the exposure a little bit because I did brighten it earlier just so you could see those uh, impacts uh, from the different DCP profiles appearing on the photo. So now you get down in here to this section where you have the exposure. You also have smart contrast. And as the name implies, I love smart contrast. It really does a great job of giving you contrast without overdoing what's happening to the colors. A lot of times a traditional contrast slider will really impact the colors. 
Con smart contrast, it feels like it does impact it some, but not nearly as much. So as I drag it to the right, you can see the colors are getting a little bit more intense, but that's because I'm shifting the light. That's what contrast is. It's the difference between the dark parts and the bright parts. So you're accentuating that by dragging it to the right and creating more contrast. Dark's getting darker, light is getting lighter. The opposite is true. If you see those kind of vintage, kind of faded looks, they're often negative contrast because people are just reducing the contrast in the image, creates a little bit of a flatter look, as you can see there, which makes it look a little bit more uh, vintage. Now, I'm a fan of contrast. I use it probably on every single photo, but the amount that I use will depend on the image. Every one of these things, in my opinion, is a season to taste kind of thing. Do what looks good to your eye because that's what matters to you is making yourself happy. So I'm gonna go a little bit of contrast here. And then usually from there, I'll go directly to highlights and shadows. So highlights are the brightest parts of a photo. I'm gonna pull these down a little bit and that's gonna impact the clouds. And I am gonna lift shadows a little bit. That's gonna create a little bit better visibility into that foreground, which some of that was obscured because of the amount of contrast that I used on the photo. But you can see, I'm doing very minor moves. And let me show you the photo. There's the before and the after. So you can have a pretty powerful and large impact on a photo just using the light tool. That's why I say it's one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful tool in Luminar. Next up is whites and blacks. Now this actually does differ from highlights and shadows. I actually did a video about a year or so ago highlighting the differences, so I won't go into it here, but I will just tell you that I think you need to be careful and it's a bit of a delicate dance. If you're gonna adjust whites and blacks and highlights and shadows, just go gently because if you start moving these whites, you're gonna really quickly get blown out. So if you move the whites up, even pulling these highlights down, you're not recovering all those different areas. So just be careful. The highlights, like I can drag them to the right and that's 100 on the highlights, not nearly as blown out as when I do 100 on the whites. So they're very different. They do impact the photo differently. Be careful with them. And by the way, there's a little trick. If you hit the J key, on your keyboard, it actually will highlight the, highlights the wrong word, it will illustrate the blown out areas of extreme highlights or extreme dark shadows. So as I drag this to the right, you see one little red dot there in the sky and a couple there, but really not much happening. But let me drag the whites. Remember, I hit the J key, it gives me this mask overlay, and that's basically telling me all the places where I've got completely blown out spots. Now you would probably never lift the whites 100 anyway. The point is you can use that J key trick to keep track of that. And I use that to kind of manage how I want my whites and my highlights to look. What I will sometimes do is I'll turn on the J key and I might drop the highlights, but depending on the photo, like in this one, I can actually lift the whites a little bit and that creates a little bit more pure kind of, uh, I don't know what else it's called besides pure white in those clouds, which I think looks good. Whereas if you start dropping the whites, they start to get gray and kind of muted and sometimes a little bit muddy. So again, it's a delicate dance between highlights and whites. Just be careful because they are different. And the same goes for blacks and shadows. I've still got the J key. Um, however, instead of a white, excuse me, instead of a red overlay, like you saw in the uh, br uh, bright parts, with shadows, you get this blue one. There you go. And if I pull the blacks down, you're gonna see the black had a bigger impact on it than the shadows did. So there it is, no shadows at all, just blacks. And so these are areas of absolute black in the photo. And I personally think it's good to have a little bit of that. So you can see a tiny bit over there. You might pull the shadows down a little bit, maybe pull the blacks down a little bit. It just depends on what you wanna do. I think it creates a little bit of realism if you have some of that, but now it's looking a little too contrasty. So maybe pull back that, maybe pull up the shadows. Regardless, for me, um, I'm always trying to manage the whites and blacks in relation to the highlights and shadows and the contrast because those five things, they impact each other significantly, right? So as I drag the contrast, you'll see it's creating darker darks and brighter whites. And so the blown out whites are getting, uh, or blown out highlights are getting more prominent as are the uh, the, the permanent or, or really dark black areas. So that's why using that J key is pretty handy and why, like I said, it's a delicate dance. Every photo is different and how you want that photo to look is obviously up to you, but just keep in mind that balancing those five sliders goes a long way toward helping you get the look that you want in your photo. Now, I'm gonna turn off or reset all five of those, and now I wanna talk about the curves tool. Now, this tool is super powerful, and I'm gonna hit the J key as well to turn that off. 
So I'm back with having just done the camera landscape DCP profile and a little bit of an exposure bump. Frankly, I've got a pretty decent looking photo, but I wanna get into the curves tool. This is massively powerful. If you had to isolate any tool that's probably the most powerful in Luminar, this is it. And it basically, there's four different pieces here. The first one uh, basically represents the range of light uh, and the tones, and then these three represent the different colors. So what a lot of people do will come in and they'll maybe drop a couple of uh, points here and just try to adjust contrast in the photo by moving these around. And usually what you see is kind of an S-shaped curve here on the curves tool, and they call that an S-curve, but it's basically showing, uh, it's basically pumping up the brighter parts and dropping the darker parts and creating a little bit more contrast. That's basically what I did. So if you look at the before and after, there's a little bit more contrast because those bright parts are definitely brighter and therefore they stand out a little bit more compared to the dark parts. Now again, not a full tutorial here on the curves tool, but if you ever decide you don't like any of these, you can just double click that little dot that you put there and remove it and um, get your uh, you know tone curve back to the way it started. I'm gonna leave it, uh, I don't know, I might do something, let me see here, maybe pull down a little bit more some of those mid-tones. By the way, the upper right corner is highlights, bottom left corner is shadows. Uh, in the middle would be mid-tones and you kind of have a sliding scale in between. But you can drop, I think, up to about 10 different uh, points on the curve here. I'm gonna go ahead and drop them all and kind of start over and just do a little bit of an exposure bump there. Something about like, actually, I, I'm gonna pull the contrast down, go a little bit higher there. And I need to pull the exposure back to get back a little bit better visibility in that. I'm gonna drop the highlights a tiny bit. Um, I'm just kind of play around. I'm gonna add a little bit of smart contrast. And to be clear, as you can see, this is part of what I'm demonstrating is you can do things on the tone curve and then still use the tools up here. You can replicate uh, contrast and highlights and shadows and things like that, uh, the impact of those by doing things down here, but you can also use them in combination. Okay, having done that, we've got three different uh, dots here. The red one corresponds to the, the red color spectrum, if you will. It's basically red at one end and blue at the other. So if I go one direction with the red, um, it's getting away from red. It's going to that aqua kind of color. And if you go the other way, it is going to the red. So again, this operates just like a tone curve where I could come in and say, I want a little bit more red in the highlights and a little bit more of that kind of uh, aqua teal in the um, in the shadows, and you get some kind of interesting, weird kind of bitone bi uh, color looks. Not a look I'm going for on this one, so I'm gonna hit reset, but I wanted to point out what those uh, color sliders can do. Green, the opposite of that is magenta. So if I go this direction, I'm getting more green, and I go that direction, I'm getting more magenta. And again, you can just pick uh, where you want to put these dots on this curve for each of these individual colors. Again, lots of power and control over the colors. And then the blue and the yellow. So this way you're gonna get more yellow in the photo and that way you're gonna get more blue. And again, you can also do an S curve. You might say, well, I want a little bit more blue up there and maybe I want a little bit more yellow down here. And that doesn't look half bad, to be honest. And I did a very slight S curve just with the blues where I put a little bit more blue in the highlight or brighter areas and a little bit more yellow in the um, darker or shadow areas. Now I'm just gonna click these and hit reset to go back to how I want to uh, keep the photo, which is not doing color adjustments here with the curves tool. But I wanted to point out lots of power, lots of control. And if you wanna see more about the curves tool, let me know, I can come back and do a deep dive just about that because it really deserves kind of its own time in the spotlight, for lack of a better word. It's a very powerful tool. But my point with this video is really yeah, I want you to get to know and get familiar with the light tool because as you can see, we've done nothing else to the photo except the light tool. I did uh, crop, straighten, and erase a couple of spots, but as far as editing goes, I only used the light tool and I was able to go from that photo that was kind of dark and kind of lacking to one that has a bit more punch and a bit more uh, excitement to it. And if I wanted to pop those colors, I could certainly do that here with the tone curve. There it is, the little bit of blue and down here a little bit of yellow maybe a little bit of yellow there just to bring up some of that color in the, uh, in the foreground in that shallow part of the lake, um, and maybe a little bit more blue in the highlights. You can see that you can really impact colors. Honestly, it's just something that requires experimentation, and I think just have fun with it and you know do whatever it is that you think needs to be done to a photo. I like these colors here. They may not appeal to you, but that's okay. But you can see that we did a, a, have a huge impact on the photo from that beginning to there, and Here's the sliding window if you want to do a comparison. 
It's very powerful. It's very useful. And frankly, it is where I start. The only time I don't start with the light tool is when I have an incredibly dark photo and I need to brighten it and I'm not sure what I want to do, in which case I'll go to Enhance AI and just use Accent AI and start dragging that to the right because it's kind of a super combination of a lot of things, including brightening. Um, kind of a smart tone, seems to add a little bit of contrast, which impacts color, so it does a lot. So Enhance AI, and specifically Accent AI, I think of as like the easy button. The light tool, uh, it can be complicated. It's not exactly the easy button, especially the curves tool. But there's a lot of power. There's a lot of control. And by being able to drop lots of different points along these different curves on all three of these colors, plus on this tone curve where you get the overall light distribution, you can have a massive, massive impact on your photo with really just a little bit of tweaking. When you marry that with a DCP profile and white balance adjustments and some of these sliders, you can see how very quickly this becomes an incredibly powerful and useful tool. And that's why I encourage you, if you're not already familiar with it and how these different things work, to get in there and experiment with it and try it on different kinds of photos. Try it on a dark photo, try it on a bright photo, try it on a daytime photo, try it on a sunset. You can do so much and have such an impact and it's a great tool to really learn because it's useful. And by the way, all of the knowledge that you gain here in Luminar editing with the light tool will translate to other products because pretty much every software editing product has all these same sliders and the tone curve in some form or fashion. So get in there, knock it around, just have fun. If you like to edit with the histogram, it's very useful to have turned on here so that you can see the distribution of light. Personally, I don't really edit with the histogram. A lot of people do, and you may cry foul uh, by me not using it a lot, but I kind of go by sight. I just prefer to edit that way. I don't really want to follow something that says, oh, the, uh, the histogram's all, you know, kind of a perfect bell curve in the middle, must be a great exposure. I don't really care. I just go by how it looks to me. Like you can see this histogram is not perfect. And yet I look at this photo and I think that looks pretty good. And now would I go change some other things? I might. I might slap some other filters on it or whatever, but um, I would not really ever look at the histogram and use that as my judge as to whether or not my photo is satisfactory to me or not. I base it on, am I happy with the photo? Um, Anyway, that's the light tool, super powerful, super useful, lots you can do, lots more I can talk about. If you wanna hear more, let me know down below. Hopefully this gives you a good idea on how to get started with it, especially if you're new to it. And if you're not new, then maybe some of these things are new to you and you haven't tried them yet, but I recommend experimenting with all these different sections and checking it out because you can do so much. And frankly, it's fun anyway. So thanks for watching my friends. Hope this give, has given you some ideas or some tips. Uh, or some tricks that you can employ in your own editing, and have fun editing out there. And I'll see you later, my friends. Take care of yourselves, and adios.